Welcome to Charlottesville, Virginia. The Virginia Cavaliers, the number two ranked team in the country, are riding a 10-game winning streak and are undefeated at home. While the Clemson Tigers are ranked 18th and are led by a balanced attack that features five players scoring in double figures. It's ACC basketball, and it starts right now. This is ACC College Hoops, and the house is rocking tonight at John Paul Jones Arena, Charlottesville, Virginia. The Clemson Tigers on the road to take on the number two team in all of the country, the Virginia Cavaliers. And when you look at the standings, you see Virginia has not lost in conference this year. The Tigers with a very solid 5-2 and two record near the top of the standings in the ACC. So great to have you with us for our game this evening, Tom Wormy, along with Corey Alexander. And for the Clemson Tigers, their highest ranking, Corey, since 2010, but the Cavaliers, who started outside the top 25, number two in the country. And Virginia playing an excellent defense, of course, under Tony Bennett. Offense actually underrated, especially in this building. They are special at the JPJ. For Clemson, they'll be without their senior leader tonight. That is Dante Grantham, injured Saturday in the game against Notre Dame. A knee injury, and he will miss the rest of the season. And Grantham really allowed Clemson pretty much to play four guards with his ability to handle the basketball and make plays, but Amir Sims will be stepping in for Grantham. Amir Sims, a local product from nearby Fluvanna County, close enough to Charlottesville to where he has 45 to 60 people coming to watch this game. But Sims runs up against Isaiah Wilkins, a senior and one of the best defensive players in all of this conference, if not the nation, and he leads Virginia in blocks this season. And Isaiah Wilkins may be the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. He is the anchor for this Virginia team defensively and starting to give Virginia even more on the offensive end of the floor. One of the guys that, that Tony Bennett doesn't like to take off of the court. But there's another one when you think about Devin Hall, who is probably Isaiah Wilkins' biggest competition for ACC Defensive Player of the Year this season. And Hall getting it done offensively as well, shooting 47% from beyond the three-point arc. A top 25 matchup. Virginia's won six in a row in the series. It's number 18, Clemson. Number two, Virginia on ACC College Hoops. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by Spirit Communications, our fiber, our network, your business. Back inside John Paul Jones Arena, the starting lineup for the Clemson Tigers, Marquise Reed, the leading scorer for the Tigers, 16 points per game. And Brad Brownell's team this season comes in with a record of 16-3. and three. Tony Bennett will utilize the same lineup he has used all season long, Devin Hall. 74th straight start for Devin Hall, and we are ready to tip it off. Virginia in the white, Clemson in the orange, and we're ready to go. ACC College Hoops, Tom Warby, Corey Alexander, and our outstanding ACC College Hoops production crew with you from Charlottesville. A near turnover forced by the Cavs. Coach Brad Brownell, eighth year. 140 wins as the Clemson head coach at his third most in school history. Also got his 300th career win this season in a victory against Florida earlier this year. Some discussion in front of that Virginia bench. Not sure what's going on now, but we actually on the first possession saw a post trap from Virginia. When Elijah Tom was catching the basketball, and that's one of the trademarks of his Tony Bennett defense is when you have a post player that they feel can hurt you. They try to take the basketball out of his hands as soon as he catches it on the block. Hall will bring it up for the Cavaliers. Number two in the nation, 18-1, 7-0 in conference play, undefeated in this arena, 12-0 and 4-0 against ACC opponents at home this year. Guy for three to get it rolling. Corey, 54 threes on the season now for Guy leads the team. And he's made a three-pointer in all 20 games this season so far. And he's even better in this building, of course, with it being his home arena. He shoots the ball extremely well.
Cavaliers coming off the win Sunday. That was at Wake Forest, 59-49. Went 7 of 17 from three-point real estate as a team in that game. And it looks like Salt might be called for the foul. And Kyle Guy, who continues to be impressive beyond the arc, doesn't need much space. So when you're guarding a guy like Kyle Guy, if you get switched on to him, you have to continue to trail that screen. Do not get hit because he doesn't need much time at all to let it fly. Guy leads the team in scoring just over 15 points per game. Shoots 43% from long distance. The entry to Thomas goes off the rim and back to Guy. We talked about Amir Sims. He shot an air ball and a turnover in his first couple possessions. He's playing close to home. He's from Havana County, about 15 miles outside of Charlottesville. And there are a lot of people here watching him play. I'm sure the nerves are a bit there in his, his first ACC career start. Shot clock inside of 10. They get it away. And it's Wilkins for two. Confidence builder for Wilkins, who against Wake Forest, Corey, just two points and one of seven from the floor in that game. But Isaiah Wilkins is going to be a guy that Virginia's going to need to make some jump shots to loosen up the pressure on the guards because as, as well as Virginia's guards shoot the basketball, they need someone in the post to be able to take advantage of it. As Kyle Guy is able to get out on the fast break and finish through what looked to be some contact, yet no whistle. Five early points for Guy. The Tigers won a timeout. Seven nothing Cavaliers. Virginia firing on all cylinders early in this one. Isaiah Wilkins, the senior captain, stepping back, knocking down the jumper, and then Kyle God turning defense into offense, finishing through maybe a little contact, still getting the bucket for points off the turnover for Virginia. Guy had 17 points that way forced. In the most recent game for the Cavs. DeVoe on the three-point attempt foul by Jerome. Tony Bennett, the ninth year head coach for the Cavs. His record in this building, astounding. 124 and 24. And he's 8 and 3 as a head coach against the Clemson Tigers. He's not all that thrilled about that most recent call to put the bow at the free throw line. And he's probably not that thrilled about wearing a tie, but all the coaches for both teams wearing the tie for the fight for literacy games. And you see, of course, the, I'm colorblind, but I know it's green because that's what it says in the notes. So, of course, confirm, you yes. can confirm that. But Tony Bennett, not one really for wearing the tie anyway. He's gotten better at it, but he's more of a guy that likes to wear the open collar. So, but doing it for a great cause, you also see coaches wearing the sneakers for coaches versus cancer. So, completely different war wardrobe change for all the coaches here in this game. Duvall with the free throws, getting the Tigers on the board. You know, a different type of start for Clemson. They actually, in their game against Notre Dame on Saturday, made their first seven field goal attempts. So needing three free throws to get on the board here in this one. But I'm sure Brad Brown knew coming in the defense was going to be stingy for Virginia. Reed took it away from Guy. Trying to get by him. Puts it up on the backboard and scores. Marquise Reed. Well, that would make Marquise Reed and Kyle Guy one and one right there. Kyle Guy did that earlier for Virginia. Marquise Reed with a little bit of get back. And the points in transition. First basket of the evening for Marquise Reed, the redshirt junior. The Akita has come into the game for Virginia. This is Mitchell. DeVoe. Shot clock inside of 10. Sims, difficult shot, and he scores. And that's a confidence builder there for Amir Sims. We talked about maybe having a little bit of nerves playing in front of so many friends and family to start this game off. But whenever you get a bucket, that pretty much changes what's going on in your mind. Now you're locked in, ready to play. And his first basket of the game is a foul will go against Virginia. So the Tigers have come back to tie this game at seven early in the first half.
ACC College Basketball is brought to you by Husqvarna Auto Mower. All-star lawns start with Auto Mower. Seeing is believing at automower.us. Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. And by Works. The Rotunda on the grounds here at the University of Virginia. Corey Alexander, a couple of 7-0 runs from these teams. We're even up. If Virginia got off to a great start, and Clemson seemed to be a little bit disjointed by Virginia's defense early, but then after the timeout by Brad Brownell, the team kind of gathered themselves and got their own 7-0 run to tie this one up. Trying to work inside. Thomas got it back against two defenders. Great interior work, Elijah Thomas. And that's one of the areas where Virginia often doesn't get beat with the offensive rebounds. At that time, Elijah Thomas continued to stick with it and coming up with the much-needed basket. David Scarra has come in for Clemson, wears number 24 in orange. Helps defensively collapsing. And now the ball ends up with Mitchell. And that's an area where Clemson is good with Elijah Thomas, a shot blocker underneath. Finding DeVoe as they collaborate for two. How about the 11-0 run in response to Virginia scoring the first seven points of our game? Well, this is a veteran Clemson team. That's one of the things that people really don't understand. Because they struggled last year to finish games with the number of transfers getting minutes, and of course, Jerome Blossom game, all ACC guy, they were unable to get things done, but they're also playing without their leader, so they have a bit of a chip on their shoulder because people have counted them out coming into this game. Foul against the Tigers, it's on Reed. And Elijah Thomas taking advantage of two of, of Virginia miscommunication, two guys going out to cover him. Makes the easy play to Gabe DeVoe for the easy bucket. Nigel Johnson has checked into the game for Virginia. He'll take care of the inbounds play as the Tigers make a substitution. Scott Spencer has come in. Marquise Reed going to the bench area. It's one of the things that Brad Brownell told us earlier today. Guys like Scott Spencer, David Scott, they would get more minutes and more opportunities considering that there's no longer Dante Grantham playing in this lineup, so it's going to need more Clemson players to be able to step up. Guy with the high arcing shot. Scrapes the Raptors for two. And it's been a great start for Kyle Guy as he continues to shoot the ball very well. Seven points for him already in this game. Mitchell cut off. Are two and two in their last four games. They've won ten in a row before that. They cough it up. Paul oh, back it out. 14 game home winning streak for Virginia as they play the Tigers tonight. The one and only meeting during the regular season between the programs. Just inside the free throw line. Hunter's got the bucket. DeAndre Hunter playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. You're talking about a young man that's had 17 and 16 points in both of his last two games, respectively. So he continues with his offensive trend as Virginia continues with their defensive trend, forcing another turnover against the Tigers. Scoring defense in all of the country. They only allow opponents about 52 and a half points per game. Great corner. Oh, right in front of that Tiger bench. First basket for Devin Hall. Spencer stayed on the floor, tried to get it to Thomas. Shot clock's at five. Mitchell takes a look up at that shot clock and heaves it. Saw pulls it in.
Kick ball will stop play. 12.22 to go. Time to take a look at our four keys to the game with Corey Alexander. Well, for Clemson, they've got to handle the traps and watch the traps with them. It's got to be not just the post traps for Virginia, but also the ball screen traps. Virginia already forcing turnovers against Clemson, and Clemson cannot continue to give the basketball away. For Virginia, is simply don't look ahead. There's a huge game for them this weekend at Cameron Indoor against Duke, where Virginia hasn't won in 23 years. They can't be thinking about that game because they're playing a ranked Clemson opponent here on their home court. That will be offense against defense. Told you that Tony Bennett's team, best of the country scoring defense, while well, Duke has scored 80 or more in 15 straight games. Hall oh, launches a three. Fight for that rebound won by Duvall. Duvall slips behind the defense and lays it in. That's the second time the game Duvall has been able to get an easy look and he's now up to seven points, but it's more important the fact for, against Virginia that he's there's no resistance at the rim when he's getting those shots. Jerome going baseline. Into the corner. That's a three. Too strong. And Johnson back to the Cavs. Baseline offensive foul. Nigel Johnson was driving. The offensive foul on Johnson. Clemson withstanding the raucous crowd at the JPJ, and they're getting it done inside with Gabe DeVoe. For the Cavs, Kyle Guy hasn't missed a shot. Seven points to lead the way. And getting an easy one in transition off of the steal was a good bucket. But this right here, this is not a floater, Tom. Elijah Thomas is the giant. Kyle Guy shoots the giant killer. <laughs> Kyle Guy, the sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Went off for 29 points in a win at Virginia's Commonwealth earlier this year. That his career high for Kyle Guy. Foul on the previous play on the drive by Johnson. They ruled the ball out of bounds. Scar shot is too strong. Here's Ty Jerome. Set to cross the 11 minute mark of the first half. See how Clemson likes to play the screen and roll. Oftentimes they like the, what they call down it, which means send the player to the baseline. And taking Virginia out of their operations on this one, forcing a bad shot by Kyle Guy. The guy had to get that shot up with the shot clock going down, but only three seconds remain for Virginia to try to get a quality look from the underneath out of bounds. Number two ranking for Virginia, its highest since 2015. Off the inbounds, Johnson can't complete the play. I can tell you who is breathing a sigh of relief because of that. It would be Clyde Trapp because had they got a layup on that play, he would have immediately heard the horn. Brad Brown now taking him out of the game, giving up the easy layup with three seconds remaining on the shot clock. Donnell was trying to get to the rim. The ball went out of bounds and will stay at this end of the floor with the Tigers. Pat Driscoll, Tim Crockerty, and Michael Roberts are officials this evening. That's Clyde Trapp. Number zero, here's Duvall. Eight on the shot clock for Shelton Mitchell. Bunnell, three-pointer. And he can do that. That's the change up for Brad Brownell. Elijah Thomas is a post player, but when Donnell comes into the game, he is able to stretch the floor. A grad transfer from Michigan, who's had multiple double figure games during this season. He gets a lot of minutes because it's oftentimes Elijah Thomas is getting in foul trouble. From the corner, too strong from DeAndre Hunter. Played 101 games in a Michigan uniform. That last three down the court was his 11th of the season. Trying to work 
Smith with trap intercepted Jerome. Hesitation. Runs into DeVoe, who had position. Offensive foul. Mark Donnell, more of a stretch four, but playing the five for Clemson with the ability to shoot the ball from the outside. Clyde Trapp getting in position, absorbing the contact, and drawing the charge on Ty Jerome. Trapp made the play defensively, so now Jerome has to go to the bench with two personal fouls. Jerome yet to score in the game or take a shot, does have three rebounds. And on the bench now for Tony Bennett. And Ty Jerome actually got in foul trouble versus Wake Forest on Sunday, and Nigel Johnson came in and gave Virginia very good minutes. But you see a, a possession there, which you don't see often versus Virginia. Gabe DeVoe now with his third uncontested layup, finding his way to the rim. Nine points for DeVoe. Leads all scorers in the first half. Johnson trying to work around and with Wilkins into the paint. Linnell came over to help. Ball ends up with DeVoe. Trying to back it down against Johnson. DeVoe! Gabe DeVoe playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. Showing off his entire arsenal. Not just a three-point shooter here tonight for Gabe DeVoe. He's getting it done in so many different ways. Gabe DeVoe has hit double digits, Corey, with 11 points. And Gabe DeVoe, 16 of his 28 field goals in ACC play have been three-point field goals. But today, it's been attacking the rim, showing a different dimension to his game as he continues to have a strong first half here against a great defensive team. DeVoe is four of five from the floor as well. God, tough catch. Too much on it. Poked in the air by Salt. Hall went up to get it. You know, and that's a 50-50 ball that Devin Hall just wanted more than Marquise Reed on that possession. Now, give Devin Hall credit. He had a better line to go pick that one up, but Marquise Reed didn't go after that the same with the same type of intensity that Devin Hall did. And see if Virginia can turn that into points on this end. Hall. Shed the defender and drops it in. And that's the way it normally works. Devin Hall with the energy and the effort to get that possession for Virginia, and he ends up being the guy that it pays off for getting the buck. Five points for Devin Hall with the 12 points and seven rebounds at Wake Forest. And the most recent win for Virginia. Stolen by the Cavs. That was also a great play by Jack Salt there, not to even allow Shelton Mitchell to have a tie up on the basketball, but to get it over to a teammate quickly so there's no jump ball in that possession. The Salt is a guy that does not fill the box score, but we've seen the last two sequences on both sides of the court. Salt is factored in. Well, and he's a factor on the court because of his physicality. He's a great screen setter and defender. Has, you know, there's a little to be desired with his offensive game, but he understands how he needs to play to help this team be successful on both ends of the floor. Tigers had four players get to double figures in their win Saturday at home against Notre Dame, the first in their history against the Irish. Shot clock down to seven. Duvall trying to bail out Reed on the baseline. It's blocked by Wilkins. Tries to save it and does to Guy. Hall running off the glass. Well defended. Sims for three. Amir Sims was fourth three-pointer on the season. None bigger than the one he hit against Notre Dame in the last minute of the game that gave them a two-possession lead to go on to a win. But I'm sure that one feels good with his family here to see. Five points now for Sims. Virginia just one of its last ten from the floor. Hunter's going to get some free throws. Clemson moving the ball well. Shelton Mitchell finding the freshman Amir Sims. Three ball, corner pop.
Gabe DeVoe leads all scores in the first half with 11 points. And Gabe DeVoe stepping up, losing his fellow senior, Dante Grantham, to injury in their win over Notre Dame on Saturday. Gabe DeVoe has taken more of the leadership on his shoulders and for the scoring as well. 11 points already for Gabe DeVoe, averaging 11.7 on the season, but off to a hot start this evening. And that's tonight's Toyota Let's Go Places. DeVoe going to the rim and scoring the only player in our game right now in double digits and above his season average. Hunters at the free throw line for Virginia. 76% of the season. For the Richard freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. John Paul Jones Arena, Charlottesville, Virginia for ACC. College Hoops, Tom Wormy along with former Virginia standout. And all ACC performer Corey Alexander. Reed can't get that one to stay down. If I'm Marquise Reed, I count that as a make. It doesn't happen in the scores book, but it doesn't. You can't get any closer to making a shot than that. It went down and actually came back out of the bat. The rim was unkind to Reed. Hunter, off balance, was pushed. Once again, if you are just joining us, Dante Grantham, the senior for the Tigers, injured on Saturday in the game against Notre Dame and out for the season with the knee injury and the torn ACL. And talking to him in shoot-around earlier today, I have never seen anyone that has torn their ACL that positive. I mean, this young man today talking to him, you would think that, you know, his... He didn't just end his season and his career at Clemson with injury because he was so positive, involved in shooting around, talking to his teammates, and just being his normal self. But, you know, you feel for the young man, but good thing he's not feeling sorry for himself. Sims pulls it in. Sims was the player in the starting lineup getting his first start of the season for Grantham. Sims has a three-point basket to his credit the first half. Inside of five minutes to go. Sims reversing field. Stripped away by Wilkins, and then he saves it to Guy all in one motion. And you see why Isaiah Wilkins is so valuable, not just to this team, but in my opinion, probably the front runner for ACC Defensive Player of the Year because he's constantly making plays to save possessions for his team to win, not just coming up with the steal, but also keeping it in bounds to allow Virginia to have the turnover. Shot clock down to six for Salt. Thomas out of nowhere with the swat. Wilkins offensive glass. Fouled on the way up as Wilkins will go to the free throw line. Elijah Thomas with the huge block, but again, Isaiah Wilkins making winning plays for his team. Takes a hard hit. And I love the sportsmanship there. Amir Sims, one of the first hands down to help Isaiah Wilkins up off the floor. 77% of the season for Wilkins from the strike. You know, Brad Brownell talked to us about how his team, without Grantham, coming into this environment and playing in this building, how would they handle it? And Brad Coach Brownell has a little bit of, you know, and, and that's the right call. Because I believe it was Marquise Reed. I'm not sure it was. I was blocked out from who it was. They did step in early into the free throw line. That is the, the correct call. But it was called late. I think that was what Brad Brownell took exception to. The, basically, the rebound was going, and Clemson was on their way down the floor before the whistle was blown. Coach Brownell, 64 ACC wins. Regular season and tournament combined. That's the most in Clemson school history. We're trying to get one on the road. Where the Clemson program has lost six in a row here at John Paul Jones Arena. Thomas on the traveling violation. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but Elijah Thomas made up his mind he was going to try to take Jack Sauce from the top of the key right there. Now, when you have Marquise Freeze, Shelton Mitchell, Amir Sims, and David Scar on the floor, 
Elijah Thomas would probably be my fifth option as far as the guy that I want going one-on-one -on -one at the top of the key. I'm not saying that wasn't the play, but he came out immediately afterwards, which kind of makes you think that that's not what Brad Brownell drew up. This is Hall. He's got seven points in the first half. It's a two-point game. Sims the spin. Sought the rebound. Virginia scored the first seven points of the game. Tigers came back to take the lead, and now the Cavs have a chance to tie or go ahead on this possession. Down low. Salt. Score it. And the foul. Jack Salt on the interior, fighting with the Tigers and tying the game at 23. Back inside John Paul Jones Arena, we take a look at the works game summary. And you look at the field goal percentage for both teams, right in the mid-40s for, for Clemson, Virginia 41%, but turnovers uncharacteristically high for Virginia, six already here in this first half, but also six steals to complement where they have won the battle and points off turnovers, 11 to six versus the Tigers. This is the first time that both teams have been ranked in this game, Corey, since 1996. Number 18, Clemson, number two, Virginia. So Salt unable to complete that three-point play, but does get into the box score. In his first basket of the game. Hall makes the steal. One on two. Guy trailing. Knocked away Mitchell out of bounds. And Virginia basketball. That was great help and recovery by Devin Hall to come up with the steal. But give the Clemson Tigers credit for sprinting back down the floor. Not conceding the two points. Shelton Mitchell coming up with the block. Shelton Mitchell, the redshirt junior from Waxhaw, North Carolina. And a transfer from Vanderbilt. Second year in the Clemson program. The number four in orange. Hunter. Past Donnell, who recovered and blocked it, and Sims grabbed it. Two twenty-two to go in the first half. Reed rises. The shot and miss, but the whistle underneath as the now hit the deck. Hunter's going to pick up the foul for Virginia. So first on Hunter. So Mitchell's out. Trap is in for Clemson. He'll handle the inbounding duties, and Hunter comes out for the Cavaliers. Four points, one of four from the floor for Hunter. And the guards for Clemson don't get a lot of a break, so... Brad Brownell trusting Clyde Trap here in a crucial stretch to be able to run the team. But Shelton Mitchell will most likely be back in shortly. His team operates a lot better with Milch Mitchell at the point, the better. Tigers haven't scored in over four minutes. Reed trying to end that. Scoring drops to nothing rare at all against this Virginia defense. This is a team that can lock down and stop you from scoring for long stretches. Wilkins. Dropped it to Salt. He'll bend that rim for the Cavs. Virginia has reclaimed the lead. Four points for Salt. Knocked out of bounds. Virginia basketball. Isaiah Wilkins with the beautiful find to Jack Salt. As Wilkins recognizes the help coming over. 
drops it off to where only Jack Salt can catch and finish. So Wilkins on the assist to Salt, who is now above his season average of 3.3 points per game with a couple of field goals. Double fisted rim rocker for Salt on the last possession. Inside of a minute to go now, the first half. Paul, oh, right to Guy, reloads for three, it's off the mark. Wilkins flies in, Duvo ends up with it, and then gets tangled up with Wilkins for the foul for the Cavs. And that's just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, but Isaiah Wilkins flying around with the energy and the effort. The only man for Virginia down there trying to get an offensive rebound and almost comes up with his second on that possession alone. Final 35 seconds of the first half. Each team is at a seven-point lead. Sims straight away for another three. Angular rebound into the corner for Salt. Ramir Sims got a good look on that one, but unable to finish it, which allows Virginia to have the last shot of the half to see if they can extend their lead going into the halftime. Cavs are on a 9-0 run. Six seconds to go. Paul has to know. Off the square, beating the horn, and the Cavs have the lead at halftime. Devin Hall patiently getting the mismatch, recognizing that he has the advantage over Mark Denault with the quickness, takes it to the rim with a beautiful finish off the glass. Nine points for Hall to lead the way for Virginia. Clemson did not score in the final 6-18 of the first half. Half time from Charlottesville, Virginia, straight ahead on the ACC College Hoops. away from the start of the second half the Cavaliers went on an 11-0 run to finish the first half Tony Bennett's team with the halftime lead this season dominating 17-0 their overall record of 18-1 and 7-0 and in conference play and of course Clemson without Dante Grantham the senior injured in the game against Notre Dame on Saturday and out for the season with an ACL injury teammates trying to step up in his absence but they did not score over the last six minutes and 18 seconds of the first half. Guy the release. Clemson dodged the bullet on that one. Gabe DeVoe making the mistake of helping off of Kyle Guy. He's not the guy to leave when you're playing against Virginia. What about DeVoe? Sims, offensive glass. Trying to get around Wilkins. And the chance at the three-point play for Sims. And Amir Sims getting the job done on the offensive glass. And beating out one of the best in the country. And Isaiah Wilkins to be able to come up with that offensive rebound. And then forces Wilkins to foul him. Picking up a second chance opportunity. And you can see the freshman is excited about that play. Despite the miss, seven points for Sims. We got the first start of his young collegiate career in there for Grantham. Hall. Three-pointer, Devin Hall. Devin Hall's shooting improvement is unprecedented. When you think about when this young man came to the University of Virginia and how much he's improved shooting the basketball now close to 48 percent beyond the three-point arc this season thomas couldn't follow the bow miss Devin hall is the first cavalier to get the double digits now with 12 and a couple of three-point baskets for Devin hall a standing shooting percentage as you reference corey 48 percent from the floor on the season for Hall. This is Wilkins, the double team. He found Salt. Salt was fouled. But Devin Hall shooting the basketball with so much confidence, no hesitation. And it doesn't look any better than that when it goes in. He just, when he touches all net and curls the nets up, that's the best look you can have for the result of a shot. Five of ten shooting in the game for Hall. Salt at the free throw line. 
Junior from Auckland, New Zealand. Struggles a little bit from the line, 52% of the season. Although Tony Bennett's team is the top free throw shooting team in the conference. And Jack, 78%. Jack Salt, not a guy that gets many free throw opportunities. Coming up empty on that possession. So it turns out to be a very good foul for Clemson to stop the bucket with Isaiah Wilkins having the advantage over Reed and the post. Into the corner. Reed, shot clock at three, must shoot and hit. Marquise Reed feeling no pressure as the shot clock goes goes down. Calmly knocking down the mid-range jump. Reed had just two points in the first half. Up to four now with that basket, but he's the leading scorer for the Tigers, averaging 16 per game. Entry down low. It was Wilkins looking for Salt out of his reach. Isaiah Wilkins was anticipating Jack Salt cutting to the basket. So that's one of those plays you just throw it blindly, expecting for your teammate to be in the right spot. Salt late trying to cut. Ends up being a turnover for Virginia, but they... Clemson unable to turn into points off of turnovers, and that's the one thing Virginia has done better than Clemson in this game. When they've gotten their opportunities off turnovers, they've made a count. Salt got the defenders in the air, and he scores six points for Salt. And that's a great move by Jack Salt. He struggled over the last couple of games to finish on the interior, so he has to feel good about making the beautiful post moves and making a count for two points. Offensive foul against the Tigers, and the third on Sims. Jack Salt with his opportunity to shine on the block, the up and under, and then the nice left-hand jump hook to finish over a very good shot blocker in Elijah Thomas. So Amir Sims has to leave the game with three personal fouls. Seven points for Sims and three of seven from the floor, but now on the bench for the Tigers. on the bench with the season-ending injury against Notre Dame. And Sims also now out of the lineup, Corey. But, you know, Brad Burnell trusts David Scar to be able to come in. They're probably a better defensive team with Scar on the floor. In more of a four-guard lineup for Clemson. Scar brings him a little more perimeter fire than does Dante Grantham. But Sims is a guy that can score with his back of the basket. You're Clemson right now. You've got to find a way to get good quality looks. Two points here in the second half. And Virginia's defense starting to tighten up. Thomas traveled as the double team came from the Cavaliers. You know, that's really the most surprising stat this year for me for Virginia. They're forcing close to 15 turnovers per game in ACC play. And this is a team not known for forcing turnovers, but with their traps in the post and on their ball screen defense, they have really been very aggressive on the defensive end, forcing those turnovers this year, not just laying back in the pack line, but bringing the defense to their opponents. Hunter misses. And a foul on the play. We'll sort it out when we come back. It's on Salt. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the ACC. Geico. New York Life. Bojangles. Food Lion and Toyota. Plenty of Virginia gear available here at John Paul Jones Arena and throughout the grounds of the University of Virginia. A lot of orange in the building. Tony Bennett and the Cavs, number two in the country, as we told you. They started the season unranked and have risen to number two. Just one loss, and that came against West Virginia. Cavs are one and one against ranked opponents this season. Scarra. Scarra 
has struggled to shoot the ball, especially in ACC play, continues to struggle here. But more known to for his defensive prowess. But with Grantham out, Clemson going to have to find other guys that can contribute on the offensive end of the floor. A star 0 for 2 from the floor for the Clemson Tigers. Shot clock down to 8 for Hall. Jerome. Salt tried to grab it out of bounds, and he deflected it out of bounds. To give Jack Salt credit, actually he had to have two Clemson Tigers boxing him out to keep him off the offensive glass, and he still almost came up with that rebound. That's just the first shot attempt in the game for Ty Jerome as far as the offense is concerned for the Cavaliers. And he got a foul trouble in the first half, so had to spend some time watching. But Clemson continues to turn the basketball over, and this is the wrong team to turn the ball over against with Virginia. With you playing less possessions, every time you get it counts more and more, especially when you're playing against that stingy defense that doesn't give you any easy looks at all. Nine opponents this season have failed to get to 50 points against the Cavaliers. Baseline runner, Kyle Guy, and a smirk after the shot. And Kyle Guy has developed a mid-range game because he shoots the three so well, every opponent is instructed to run him off the line. And he's developed a number of shots within the paint that allow him to continue to be a big-time scorer without having to rely on the three. He's the second leading scorer with nine points for Virginia. That shot clock for Clemson down to five. This is Reed. Stripped away Hall. Off of Reed. Virginia ball. Kyle Guy showing off some of his offensive skills on one end of the floor. And then Devin Hall showing off his defensive skills on the opposing end. As Virginia continues to turn it up defensively, and the crowd here is loving it. Had an opportunity to talk with Dante Grantham before the game, and he asked me, is it going to be rowdy in here today? And I just told him simply, it's always rowdy in the JPJ. <laughs> Salt lobs it in. Hunter got Thomas in the air. Other side of the rim. Out of bounds into Virginia. Now the shot clock is at two. The ball never hit the rim. Now the last time that Virginia was in this situation, they got an easy layup for Nigel Johnson. He didn't make it. It'll be interesting to see what Tony Bennett runs here to try to get a good look with just two on the shot clock. Puts Diakite into the game. Donnell came in for Clemson number five. This is Jerome on the inbounds. Two on the shot clock. It's going to roll out of bounds and be Clemson ball. Four straight trips to the NCAA tournament for Tony Bennett and the Cavaliers trying to fight off the Clemson Tigers. Number 18 in the country. They are two and two on the road, one and two away from Clemson, South Carolina in conference play. Jerome interception. Kyle Guy, three for three. Second three-pointer of the game for Kyle Guy. Largest lead for the Cavs. And two times, Clemson defenders have tried to cheat the play and go over top of the screen against Kyle Guy. And both times, Kyle Guy has burned them. You cannot cheat the screen. You have to trail him. He does not need much time at all to get the three off. And if you don't guard it correctly, he's going to make it count. Kyle Guy is our hearty star to watch. Couple of threes in the game. And now up to 55 made threes on the season. That leads the team. His 12 points tied with Devin Hall for the team lead. Clemson has gone over five minutes now with a basket. DeVoe challenged at the rim. Out of bounds as Jerome trying to recover it. The Akite coming over. Great help by Mamadi Diakite. Gave DeVoe getting past Ty Jerome, but that's the staple of Virginia's defense. 
help the helper, help all the time when against opposing teammates. When you guy gets beat, you got to make sure someone is there, Diakite there to bail out Todd Jerome. Brad Brownell starting to pace those sidelines. And Virginia right now concerned about the shot clock. And that's right, they got it right. The shot clock actually reset to 30 seconds, but the ball never hit the rim, so it shouldn't have. They correctly got it to 14. Good ball. Thought about the shot. Couldn't squeeze it. Inside of 10 now on that shot clock. DeVoe trying to shake Jerome. Seven all run for Virginia. It's largest lead of the game at 10, 37-27. Diakite tried to put it on the floor, stripped away Reed. DeVoe does not have the numerical advantage and backs it up. Mitchell has not scored in the game for Clemson. Up and under against Hall. And what you've seen today is really what you see pretty much every game for Virginia. Whoever Devin Hall is guarding is going to struggle. He has held leading scores well below their average all season long, and he continues to do it today both against Marquise Reed and even Selton Mitchell. Hunter, basket and foul. Donnell picks up the foul when we come back. DeAndre Hunter at the free throw line. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by Spirit Communications. Our fiber, our network, your business. Hey, Tom, I had an opportunity to meet two guys today. Gene Flom on the left. Tony Laquitano on the right, who played here at the University of Virginia. And, and Tony Laquitano actually walked up to me and he told me, I actually got more shots than you did. He described a game that he had. He went 19 for 44 field goals in a game. That is getting your looks at the rim. But I can tell you what, I can respect any man that gets 44 <laughs> shots at the rim. He went, you. Trey Young caught so much attention and flack over this week for taking 39 shots. Can you imagine getting up 44? You know, maybe it wasn't so much the amount of shots, but his shot selection. Let's keep that in mind. <laughs> By the way, those I'll guys... i tell you what, if you take 44 shots, yeah. I'm sure you took some bad ones in yeah. there, too. Those guys played at University Hall, the previous home of Virginia basketball. Were they University... That might have actually been Mim Jim. Yeah. That, that, could, way have, back. that could have been Mim Jim in, in that era. Jerome to three. You know, this is where you want to think that it's danger time for Clemson, but it's actually been danger time. Clemson with only four points here in this second half as Virginia continues to turn it on on both ends of the floor. Like Diakite might get whistled here. Ty Jerome had been quiet offensively in this game, but is able to rhythm up into a three and knocks it down. And Tom, you know, when you look throughout college basketball, I'm not sure that there is a backcourt in the country that has three guys that are shooting the ball as well as Devin Hall, Kyle Guy, and Ty Jerome. Another miss for the Tigers. They're now over seven minutes without points. They closed the first half. Empty the last six plus minutes. So two extended droughts have really put the Tigers in a hole. Here's Reed, the anticipation. Goes by Guy for the layup. He's about the easiest basket Clemson has gotten on the day and will get off of the turnover for Virginia. And we'll see if that actually gives the Tigers a little bit of a spark for some hope here. And if they can come up with some stops. How about Johnson accelerating to the rim? His first basket of the evening. The run is 15 to 2 for Virginia. 
Reed. Guy was right there defensively. Cavs will take their time. Nine minutes and change to go in our game. Tom Wormy, Corey Alexander, our outstanding ACC College Hoops production crew with you from Charlottesville, Virginia, and John Paul Jones Arena. And this has been a tough stretch for Virginia. Three games in six days. That's a lot for these young men to play. If they're able to finish this one off with the win, they will be going into Duke on Saturday. 8 0 in the ACC. And with a lot of confidence, Marquise Reed coming up with the steal. And getting an easy bucket on the other end, but Nigel Johnson repaying the favor. No resistance at the rim for Clemson as Johnson's able to get an easy two. We're talking about that matchup this weekend. Big game for Virginia going on the road to Duke in an arena where they haven't won in 23 years. That will be the narrative with the number two team in the country going in to face probably the most talented team in the country. Gonna be fun. The Akite got a piece of that last shot attempt. This is Guy. Quick release. Hunter able to run it down. Virginia trying to follow up that win against Wake Forest with a win tonight. Ty Jerome hits second three. Jerome excites the crowd at the JPJ. Another long distance three. Virginia with the 19 point lead. Virginia and Clemson are the second half dominated by the Cavs. In fact, Brad Brownell's team has scored only six points in the second half against this suffocating defense of the Virginia Cavaliers. That takes us right to the Red Lobster game summary. And the game summary has been about points off of turnovers. Virginia with a 19-8 advantage. Both of these teams have struggled handling the ball, but Clemson's 15 turnovers have turned into 19 points for Virginia. And you see the field goal was shooting and shooting in the numbers. Virginia dominating the second half, 21-6. The 32% shooting by Clemson, way below their season average of 48%. And Clemson's Clemson. third best in the conference coming into tonight, Corey. Clemson out of the timeout. Pretty much hands the ball over to Virginia once again, giving Virginia an opportunity to put more points on the board. Brad Brownell has to be disappointed with the effort. I mean, coming out of a timeout, the execution there, definitely not something Coach wanting to see. Ball beats the clock. 14 points, Devin Hall. We talk about Clemson coaching. I would be remiss if I did not say happy birthday to my big sister, Audra Smith, today, head women's basketball coach at Clemson, but also UVA alum. One year older today. I'm not going to say her age, <laughs> but happy birthday. Watch that shot clock. Reed. Jerome tracks it down. This, the 127th meeting between these two programs. But when they have played in this building, Virginia has won six of the seven meetings, and they're well on their way to another win tonight. All the way to the best at Nigel Johnson. You know, and Brad Brownell talked to us about how his team will respond without Grantham coming into this building and playing in this environment. And for the first half, you would have to say that they did a very good job hanging in the game. But the second half, there hasn't been much compete at all with the Tigers. Foul on the rebound is going against the Tigers. Nigel Johnson continuing to attack the rim. Beautiful switch to the left hand to finish amongst the trees. Clemson now just one of its last 11 field goals has fallen. 52-29 as we close in on the six-minute threshold of the second half. 
And Tom, there's always kind of a mental count here in the building when Virginia's playing as to whether a team will get to 50 points. And right now, you have to be concerned if you're Clemson, if you can even get to 40. That will help. That is a three-pointer from the corner by Scott Spencer. And Scott Spencer, another local product playing at the Blue Ridge School for former Virginia alum Kay Lemke. Actually, three players from Blue Ridge on the court today with Spencer and Amir Sims from Clemson. And then, of course, Mommy Diakite from Virginia. Just the third three of the season for Spencer. DeVoe had it for a moment, then lost it. And that right there is the entire second half of the Clemson Tigers. We talked about Amir Sims and his family being here. Scott Spencer has his family in town, too, so has to feel good for him being able to knock down the three. But down 20, can't feel good to Brad Brown now or anyone on this team. Tigers trail by just four points at halftime. But then went over seven minutes during the second half without scoring. Still just nine points and a half for Clemson. Jerome! Nifty little flip. Jerome's up to eight points. Spencer? Not this time. Reed tracks it down. Sims! Strong move out of that corner of Air Sims. Sims going baseline with the finish. And you see Dante Grantham trying to encourage his teammates. But I'm sure that young man is burning inside. It's one of those scenarios where you hate not being able to be out there with your guys. But, of course, out of his control, as he will miss the remainder of this season. And his Clemson basketball career will come to an end. But this is a young man that will continue to keep playing basketball, of course. Bounces out for track. Tigers did win their first three ACC games. NC State on the road at BC and, at, and again at home against Louisville. But just two and two in their last four, and it appears that the mountain is too high to climb right now inside of four minutes to go as the Cavaliers have the commanding lead. And they get the ball right back. Appears that the Cavs on their way to victory. A win tonight would be their best start of the ACC since the 80-81 season when they started 12 and 0. The Akite trap will not contest the hammer from the Akite. Thunderous first two points of the game for Mamade Diakite. Spencer, it's a two. Five for Spencer all in the second half. The winning streak for the Cavs, Corey, will move to 11 in a row. Longest since the 2015-16 team. going to be a 15-game home winning streak as well as a foul is called against the Tigers. Well, when you come up with 19 turnovers and get to make plays like this, you're going to have success at home. Cavs up big, outscoring Clemson 29-13 in the second half. Just two and a half minutes to go in this one. A look at our AP poll. Four teams. 
in the top 25, three in the top 10. However, North Carolina losing on the road at Virginia Tech last night. Corey. Yeah, I believe North Carolina will drop out of the top 10, will still remain ranked next week, but big win for Virginia Tech at home, and a much needed win for the Hokies last night. Of course, the other team in the top 25, these Clemson Tigers, they meet to tonight 18th in the country. Clock all the way down to two. Hunter got it away. They're going to rule it a shot clock violation against the Cavs. So Jack Salt comes out of the game. Salt with six points, which is above his season average. Just about three and a half per game. Jay Huff. In for Salt, red trip freshman from Durham, North Carolina, and seven foot one. Fighting with Sims for the rebound. Also, Marco Anthony is in there, number 24 in white. Glory does the outcome tonight. Surprise you a little bit based on the way these teams are playing coming in. Well, you have to look at this is a new Clemson team. When you think about the fact that Dante Grantham is no longer a part of being able to play in this program, there are adjustments for Brad Brownell, and you're taking one of the best players in the ACC off the floor. So that adjustment period showed up, you know, big time here for Clemson. The first half, they were in good shape, but the second half, they couldn't respond to anything that Virginia was doing. But definitely no surprise to see the Wahoos holding Clemson to 36 points thus far. And if Clemson doesn't score another basket, it would be their lowest, Virginia's lowest total points allowed on the season. Allowed 37 versus Wisconsin here at home. And this Virginia defense continues to get better and better each game out. Tony Bennett starting to empty the bench. Virginia this game shooting 43% as a team. The Tigers was 32.5% shooting. And we're now into the final minute. Bucket there by Austin Castro. Son of former Virginia Hooper Dirk Castro. And now working at the VAF. So sure, good for Austin to be able to get a bucket here in front of the home crowd. Just his fourth field goal of the season for Castro. Freshman from Charlottesville. Huff sends it back out. Justice Bartley is number two. Marco Anthony, shot clock winding down. It's a three. at home 13 and 0 and perfect in the conference 8 and 0 for Tony Bennett 19 and 1 on the season let's step aside for just a moment we'll come back to wrap it up from Charlottesville in just a sec Cavaliers are now 19 and 1 on the season as the number two team in the country. They hold the Clemson Tigers, Corey, to 36 points tonight. And, and Tom, I've done the last four Virginia games, so I've spent a lot of time with this team recently. This may be the most dominating defensive performance I've seen out of them this entire season. And this is a good Clemson team. We know that Grantham was not here with them, but yet this was a dominating performance. 
Corey, the Tigers shot just 32% of the game, 3 of 20 from beyond the arc as we get a look at the numbers from tonight's game. And you talk about the 3 for 20. That's extreme defense right there, really just holding Clemson in check. Virginia won the rebounding battle. They only turned it over 11 times to 19 for Clemson. The Tigers scored just 13 points in the second half to 34 for Virginia. At Devin Hall, consistent performer, Corey, 14 points. He led the way, made a couple of threes, too. And the thing is, Devin Hall's defensive impact may have been even larger than his offensive impact. What he was able to do with the offensive end of the floor was great. But Marquise Reed, the leading scorer for Clemson coming in, and another time where Devin Hall is holding the opponent's leading scorer down, not giving Reed any breathing room as Devin Hall continues to play great basketball on both ends of the court. Incredible performance start to finish for the Tigers. We thought maybe Virginia took that 7-0 lead. Tigers came back to erase it, hung tough in the first half, trailed by just four. Second half belongs to Virginia. Well, Gabe DeVoe was huge for Clemson in the first half. 11 points for Gabe DeVoe early, and he seemed to be the guy for Clemson that was going to be able to put them on his back and carry them throughout this game with, while they didn't have Grantham. But in the second half, adjustments by Tony Bennett pretty much kept DeVoe out of the scoring column. He wasn't able to get on track in the second half, nor were any of his Clemson teammates. Kyle Guy, 12 points, 5 of 12 from the floor, and he had a couple of threes as well. For he did, and Kyle Guy got the job done defensively as well. He had a number of steals that got him out in transition and a couple of easy looks, and then Clemson made some mistakes defensively on Guy, allowing him enough room to get off that deadly three-pointer, and he was able able to knock them down. So Virginia is now 8-0 in conference play. Kind of a big game coming up on Saturday for the Cavaliers. They are traveling to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Last year, the teams played here. Duke won that game by 10 points. As we get a look at the upcoming schedule, Duke is number four in the country. The Cavs are number two, and they are set to collide Saturday. Well, and Virginia hasn't won at Cameron Indoor since 1995. I remember that game very well. <laughs> but more importantly, this is a team and Duke that needs a win against Virginia to boost his confidence, and Virginia needs that win at Duke. Virginia is for real. I'm not sure if the country knows it, and if they can go into Cameron and get a win there, that would make a tremendous statement. Again, they allow just 36 points tonight. That is the lowest total by an opposing team all season as they limited the Clemson Tigers to just 13 points in the second half. 7 of 19 for three-point distance for the Cavaliers on their way to the victory, 61 to 36. What a performance by Virginia. Their record now, 19 and 1. They are 8 and 0 in conference play. Duke on the horizon on Saturday for the Cavaliers, who beat the Clemson Tigers for the seventh straight time in this series. Once again, the final 61-36 for Corey Alexander and our entire crew. I'm Tom Warby. Good night from Charlottesville, Virginia. Thank you.